Now, Flutterflow recently released a feature that makes it super easy and super helpful to build all kinds of apps. And in fact, this is a feature I've been waiting for a very, very long time. And so in today's video, I'm going to be explaining to you what this feature is, why it's so important, and I'm going to be showing you some ways that you can leverage this feature to the fullest. So make sure you watch the video until the end. I'm going to be showing you some excellent techniques. Now, before we get started, as always, all the apps and all the resources that I discuss in this channel can be viewed and or cloned when you become a member of our amazing Patreon community. And if you're still not a member of our incredible, rapidly growing Patreon community, then you can certainly become one via the first link in the description. Now, the feature that we're going to be covering today is called Debug Panel. And this is a panel that you're going to be seeing on the left hand side whenever you're going to be running or testing your apps okay and so right here i built a proof of concept app that has multiple screens that illustrates some of the power and the flexibility of this amazing feature now before i show you some of the things that this feature is going to be super useful for the first thing i want to show you is what kind of data does it show you okay so right here i have a simple page with various elements okay and these are input elements we have text inputs we have a drop down we also have a slider we have uh this counter and then we have a bunch of uh, radio buttons check boxes etc etc now all of these things are going to be shown here now before we cover any of the visible elements that you're seeing on this page it's worth mentioning that the debug panel is also going to show you other elements other variables that are not directly visible so you're going to be seeing things like global properties okay things like the screen width the screen height platform you know theme mode current sign things like that you're also going to be seeing things like app state okay so here we are looking at my app state as you can see i only have one variable here this app state var1 that i'm going to show you inside of my flutterflow builder in just a moment along with app state you're also going to be seeing page state that's obviously on this page so on this page i have this page state var1 variable and this is a list of strings just like app state and you can see it right here exactly as i've configured it on this page now when it comes to the actual widgets that you're seeing on the screen all of them are going to be here so we're going to have widget state for all the widgets that we're seeing here so as you can see i have three input text widgets i have a drop down i have a slider i have a count controller etc etc et and so anytime you modify any of these widgets you're going to be seeing the values being updated here in real time so let's say i come to my first text uh, input widget and i say well this is a text widget one and as i type that you're going to be seeing this value being updated so if i come to the second widget and you pay attention to this value here you're going to be seeing it updated in real time so if i do text widget 2 you're going to see that right there and same thing is going to happen if i come to let's say this drop down i say option one now this drop down the value is option one if i come in here and i say option three now it's going to be set to option three same thing with the slider if i update the slider the value is going to change okay so basically you're seeing the blueprint to your widgets here to the values you're seeing exactly how your app is understanding them right how your app is making sense of them right and so continuing on if i update this you're gonna see this being updated and same thing for this right here you know this radio button value is option two if i make it option four it's gonna be option four checkbox was true now it's false if I click it again, it's going to be true. Okay. So that is the first thing that you guys need to understand. All the values, as I am changing them, as I'm reading them, as I'm updating them, they are going to be set here. So if you think about widget state as you're using it inside of Flutterflow, well, guess what? All of this is right here. And not only your widgets that you see, right? We're also going to be uh, shown 
page state, app state, and global properties, right? Essentially, all the variables, right, and their values that the app knows about, right? And this is something that you guys need to understand from the get go. And this makes it super, super powerful. Okay. So now that we had this little introduction of some of the things that uh, this uh, debug panel can show you, like some of the variables, the values it can show you, let me show you some scenarios where this, you know, using this debug panel is going to be super, super important to your app development. Okay. So if you jump over to this second page here, here i went ahead and built a very very simple calculator app okay and so the idea is you can you know enter a value here using this uh number pad here and then you can um uh enter you can select the kind of operation you want and then you can enter another value and you're gonna get a result so as an example let's say i have 125 and i want to multiply it by 11 okay i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna say 11. okay next i'm gonna press equals to and this is the value that we're getting now here we can erase this value we can start over and we can do something else i can say 100 and you know maybe 155 and i want to add another 155 okay and then i do equals to and we get 310 and that sounds about right and I can clear that again. Now, when you're building apps like this, it's important to understand that you're not going to be dealing with just one variable, right? You're going to have multiple variables that are going to be stored in the background that your app will need to kind of work with later on. So in this example, we're going to have two values and an operation that will do something to those values. So as an example, we just did 155 plus 155. Well, that first 155, we need to store it because we need to enter that second 155. And so what's happening here is as I enter 155, I need to store that 155, right? So if I press this, that 155 needs to be stored. And that is why I have two values here that are part of this page state. And so seeing this debug panel makes building these kinds of apps very very simple and straightforward because that way i can see what's happening so as an example let's say i put you know 355 and i do plus well that 355 needs to be saved right here and i can see it's being saved but not only does it need to be saved it also needs to be calculated correctly right because this 355 is actually 3 times 10 plus 5 times 10 plus 5 again right because we're entering it by digit and so I need to make sure that this is being calculated correctly. In this case, it's being calculated correctly. And so now, uh, let's say I put, you know, I, I enter, I don't know, plus, right? I see that this is being saved here, and now I can enter the second value. And so let's say I want to, I have my plus already, and let's say I want to add a hundred, uh, you know, a hundred and fifty-five again. Okay. So now I can see I have this three fifty-five, I have this one fifty-five, I have the plus. So everything should work and we get a value of 510, which sounds about right. And so having access to this debug panel makes it super easy to see in real time the values that I'm working with. OK, and this would have been a pain without having access to this. OK, now the second type of app I want to show you is a very, very popular type of app that I've built many times on this channel. And this is a quintessential shopping cart application okay so the first thing that you're seeing is a list of products so we have 10 products here and we also have a shopping cart that's going to track you know the the products that are placed in the shopping cart okay now before i actually place these products in a shopping cart let's go ahead and take a look and see what's happening here so when we first load this page here you can see that we have this page state and we have this product list and this product list is initialized to 10 items and the items are just product one through product 10. And you can also see that the shopping cart is empty. And now this is important because I've had many situations where I inadvertently initialize the shopping cart. Okay. And maybe you've had the same issue, but I know I've had this issue uh, a couple of times when I was building apps and I was, you know, spent a lot of times debugging it, but now I can see the shopping cart is empty. Well, if I click one of these buttons here, that's going to add the, 
you know, the specific product to the shopping cart. It's going to add the corresponding product. So let's say we want to add product one. And once we click it, we see that shopping cart has product one. Okay. And let's say I want to add product five. And now you can see that shopping cart has two items, product one and product five. Let's go ahead and add product 10. And now you can see shopping cart has three items product one product five and product ten now here you can see that we have three items in the shopping cart which is correct that's simply showing us the number of items but most importantly we're seeing the products here okay so now we know that you know these products are in the shopping cart so everything else if there are some issues here i know that this is not an issue with app state or page state or anything like that that is an issue with my code so now if I click here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna reset the shopping cart. I'm gonna remove all the products. So I click here, zero items and shopping cart is empty. Okay, and so let, let's go ahead and add a couple of more items. So now we have five items. And as you can see, this is the first product that was added, six, five, four, three, two. Okay, and so here I can see that I have five products. And I know that, you know, my logic, you know, this logic here, this resetting, this adding logic is working as expected. I know that this is my, my state of the app. So if I have any issues here, that is a simple calculation issue that I probably, you know, messed up somewhere. Maybe it was a code expression or a custom function. But most importantly, I know that, you know, the consistency of my app is correct, that my app has the right data, everything is there. And that's like half the battle or even more. That's like maybe 70% of the battle right there. So I'm going to go ahead and clear that. And now we, our shopping cart is empty. Everything else is still there. We're not messing around with this product list. We're not manipulating this list and we're just treating it as a read only list. And we're simply, we're mainly working with the shopping cart. And so the existence of this debug panel makes it super easy and super straightforward to work with apps where you need to be monitoring state, as is the case here with our uh, shopping cart app, okay? Now let's go ahead and jump into another quick example that will show you a bug that I have created. And using this panel, we will be able to fix this bug in record time. Now, with this app here, when you click on this button, we're going to be executing an API call. So we're going to be connecting to a third party server, executing a call and then getting some data back. OK, now the server that we're going to be connecting to is this JSON placeholder uh, sample API call. And this is the data that we're going to be getting back here. OK, and so let's go ahead and, and run this example and we're going to have a bug and you're going to see it. And then we're going to try to fix this bug. So I'm going to click here. That's going to execute it. And we're getting no. We're not getting a value that we want. And why is that? Well, if you take a look at the answer here, we've gotten the right value, right? So if I hover over, you can see that this is correct here, right? This is exactly what we have. However, response is no. Okay. So we're getting the right value. But for some reason, the response is no. And now if we come back to our app here, and we go to this third example and we want to take a look at what's happening here. Well, this thing here sets the response. So this is correct, right? This is body text here. But for some reason, we're not displaying the, the right thing. And, and why not? Well, first of all, I want to display the title here and that's not being displayed correctly. And just like in the previous example, right, where you know, we know that we have the right data, the page state, the app state, everything checks out. It's just we're not seeing the right data. You are, you know at this point that the issue is not with the data. The issue is not with the API call. The issue is somewhere with the way that we're working with the app, with our logic. And this is exactly the case here. Because if I jump back here, you see I'm displaying this title too, when it should be title, right? This JSON path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that. I'm going to say confirm and I'm going to recompile my app. And now I should hopefully not be seeing that error message. All right, and there's our app. We're gonna come back over here to the last page. We're gonna execute this. And now we are displaying the title correctly, okay? You see the response is now correct. The answer is still correct, as was the case before. But now we see that the response is also correct because we have that JSON path set correctly, okay? 
And we were able to debug this issue in record time, all thanks to the existence of this debug panel. Because this debug panel is kind of like the blueprint to your app. It tells you exactly what's happening. It's almost like, you know, having like a see-through box instead of, you know, looking at it through as a black box, as was the case before. Now you have a see-through box and you can see exactly where the values are, what the values are set to, and that way you can see exactly what the issue is. And so this is an amazing, an amazing feature because it saves you time, it saves you hassle, and it allows you to build your apps quicker, and it allows you to build more complex and more user-friendly apps because you're not going to be bogged down with debugging and figuring out variables and as i was doing actually displaying various page state data or app state data or anything like that this just is going to save you a ton of time and just like i mentioned in the beginning of the video we're not only talking about the widgets that you can see on the screen just that widget state we're also talking about the state variables the page state the app state plus the global variables and pretty much all the variables that your app is interacting with and that is why this is such a powerful feature now i kind of quickly glossed over this app that i built here and really the purpose of the app that i built here was to showcase how to make best use of this debug panel functionality but this app here has a lot of great functionality in its own right. For instance, I have here a calculator that I built. I also have, you know, a shopping cart example, very, very rudimentary example. And I have an API call here. And so if you're interested in kind of getting access to this app, seeing how I've built some of the functionality, maybe the calculator, maybe some of the other things, remember, you'll be able to get access to this app as a member of our incredible Patreon community. And if you're not yet a member of our amazing Patreon community, then you're greatly missing out because not only will you get access to this app right here, you're gonna get access to pretty much all the other apps that I built throughout the course of running this channel. They're all there. You can view them, you can clone them, you can do anything that you want with them. You have complete and full and unlimited permission to do pretty much anything that you want. And that means maybe taking an app and kind of building on top of it, or just looking at some of the functionality, or learning some of these techniques every single app you know teaches you various unique techniques plus all the apps come in different shapes and sizes right so we have apps that are fairly simple and we have production ready apps that took me days and even weeks to build out and share with you guys and so as a member of our incredible patreon community you're going to get access to all my apps you're also going to get access to extra content such as Q&As and our incredible Patreon supported masterclass series where I do deep dives of various apps, tools, topics that our community is interested in learning more about. So these are videos that I publish that are a lot more in depth, a lot more comprehensive than the videos that you see on this YouTube channel. And that's not all. You're also going to get access to our amazing community where you can connect with other members, connect with other no-code developers, learn from them, teach them something, and grow together and really become better as a team, become better as a community. And above and beyond all that, you're going to be supporting the channel and supporting my work. And that is greatly, greatly appreciated. So if you're getting any amount of value uh, with these videos that I'm putting out, with these tutorials, then you're gonna get even more content there. Plus you're gonna be supporting the channel and supporting my work. And so if any of that sounds like it's going to provide you with any amount of value, then you should definitely join our amazing Patreon community. And you can do just that via the first link in the description below the video.